Hello, everybody! It must be Tuesday because it's time for another Museum From Home tour! But as you can see, I am not at the museum. <laughs> There's a white void behind me. I am actually in my home today. We decided to do something a little bit different, uh, and we decided to do more of a tour of the mind uh, and discuss a really fun topic. The Great Roberson Roberson Debate. So, a few weeks back, our Facebook page got a few comments concerning how one should pronounce the name Roberson. This has always been a bit of a uh, fun debate for staff. Uh, some say robe, others say rob, some say tomato, others say tomato. You get the idea. But a better question is, how did the Robersons want their name to be pronounced? The interesting thing about history is how people say things, especially things so personal as a name, becomes a little lost if there's no effort to preserve it. I don't immediately think, oh, history is going to want to know how I said my last name. But these little details of life are often what we end up painting over because it's these intimate details that can reveal bits about us. Um, but we'll dive more into that in a minute. So for, th for this tour, we're going to talk about what's in a name. And I had a lot of fun researching this. So how do you pronounce Roberson? Or is it Roberson? Everyone in Broome County can't seem to agree quite on how to pronounce it. We haven't taken a poll to see what the split exactly is, but everyone seems to have a different take on why their pronunciation might be the right one. So we're not going to speculate wildly, though it can be fun to. We're here just for the facts. So what do we know? Names change over time. They have their origins like language. For instance, my name, my last name, Shoemaker, actually started out as Schumacher when my family lived in Germany. They emigrated from England, where they changed it to Shoemaker, and then they went on to America. I know this because there's a line of Shoemakers that leads to me. This is the story that has been passed down from my grandpa and my grandparents from generation to generation. And when I asked them why it may have changed, because there are a ton of Schumachers that live in America, my family can only guess as to the reason. My current hypothesis is that they may have changed it to fit in. They may not have necessarily been with a group of German Americans when they lived in England, so they felt that they wanted to, an easy way to fit in was to change it to a more English sounding name. I'll never really know because that information has been lost to me. I have no primary sources, no diaries to attest to one way or the other. The surname Roberson is much in the same way, in that it has lines to Scotland where it was Robertson with a T, and they likely changed it somewhere along the way to America. And the reasons why can range from a botched spelling at Ellis Island or the, hypo or the hypothesis I have concerning my family name. It was changed as an easy way to fit in, which is a very human feeling to have and a relatively simple thing to change about oneself for the sake of fitting in. But the pronunciation of Roberson is a little trickier than Shoemaker for obvious reasons. <laughs> there are no direct descendants of Alonzo and Margaret to say, yep, grandma and grandpa said it this way, which is why we say it like this. They had no children. So we only have the word words of secondary sources to say anything about it. And we'll get to that in a minute. So, okay, let's go back a generation to Alonzo's father. So this is Alonzo Roberson Jr. of the Roberson Mansion. And here we have Alonzo Roberson Sr., Alonzo's father. So as you can see here in the, in the line, 
Alonzo Sr. only had three kids that actually, and only Alonzo Roberson Jr. survived past infancy. But as you can see, there's no other family line to say that Alonzo Roberson Sr. pronounced his last name Roberson or Robertson. So ne then we have to go a generation up to Alonzo Sr.'s father and mother, Abigail and Delvin Roberson. So they actually had nine children, <laughs> as you can see here. And there are descendants amongst these nine kids. And guess what? Even they don't agree on the pronunciation. Some say it Roberson, others say it Robertson. And this means that there may have been a split at one point, a decision by different family members to change the very pronunciation somewhere along the line. Which means it's not unthinkable that Alonzo and Margaret may have said it one way or the other. So what do we have that could help us narrow down which punctuation Margaret and Alonzo may have used? We have two. Rumors and secondary sources. So we'll start out with the fun stuff. Rumors. Rumors can say quite a bit about history. Rumors are not always true and should never be taken at face value without confirming with additional sources. But they can say a lot about the person who originally told the rumor and their view of events or their view of the people of whom they're telling the rumor about. Rumors usually have a bit of truth to them. It's sussing out whose truth it belongs to and what that truth might be. And there is indeed a rumor about the Roberson name that has been passed down. Our first rumor is apparently Margaret or Alonzo, no one knows, didn't like the Rob sound in Roberson because of the act of robbing sounded low class. There's also another rumor that Margaret liked the row sound, a more French pronunciation, because it sounded more affluent. This rumor isn't out of the question. Alonzo Roberson was part of a growing and relatively new upper class within Binghamton. He and Margaret moved from their second, from their first house in Main Street, which was perfectly fine for the two of them to live out their days. But they decided they wanted to move to Front Street, which was becoming a place where the Binghamton elite was starting to gather and settle. On top of that, they brought two properties with homes still on them, demolished them both in order to build a brand new Italian Renaissance revival style mansion. These actions say a lot about how the Robersons wanted to be viewed. So the rumor has a bit of truth in perhaps the sense that Margaret and Alonzo desperately wanted to be seen as top drawer. That is a term of the Gilded Age, uh, which means to be a higher caliber. However, we can't use this as proof that this is how they pronounce their name. So what we do have are oral histories, where people actually were asked about the pronunciation of the name Roberson. Here's where I put a disclaimer on oral histories. Memory is a funny thing and has a tendency of changing over time. So it's important to corroborate these with as many testimonies as we have. Also, you have to take into consideration who is telling this story and what their relationship is to the person that they're telling the story about. Fortunately, I was able to find two oral histories, interviews with Bob Keller and Francie Clark from back in 2003. Each of these people had interactions with the Robersons and both declared that the name was always pronounced Robertson. These testimonies are a huge argument for the Robertson side. And I need to add a bit of a caveat. I don't know what their relationship was to the Robersons or Robersons. <laughs> um, they likely weren't 
BFFs with them. They seem to have interactions with them, however. Um, but it's a huge drop uh, into the bucket for the Rob Urson side. So the short of it is it was probably pronounced Robertson. And I would like to know where you stand in this great debate. Do you pronounce it Roberson or Robertson? And what are your reasons? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And by the way, our gift shop has shirts that talk about these. Ah, wonderful, wonderful shirts. To uh, kind of commemorate this grand debate. And if you'd like one, you can call our gift shop at 607-772-0660 to order one. Just leave a message and one of our staff will probably get back to you. But anyway, that's what I have for the great Roberson Robertson debate. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you guys stay safe. And until we can see each other at the museum again, I'll see you next time. Bye.